Hi there, everybody. So as they say in the UK, I am chuffed or super excited, however you want to put it, to have a really fabulous guest joining me today in this episode. This guest, Leslie Fear, is a podcast host, and I have to say her podcast is my one of my top favorites, uh, and it's titled <laughs> Because I Want to Know. And she interviews all kinds of people who have unusual jobs. She interviews people who have all kinds of kind of psychic phenomenon happening to them. Um, and she gets into the nitty gritty and, you know, has these real authentic conversations. So she is right up my alley. She's also a writer and an author, and she's a larger than life personality. So I'm thrilled to have her join me today. So welcome, 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 Leslie. It's great Thank to have you for having me it's an honor to be here i love your your youtube channel i just i'm new to it and i watched your interviews and i just i think you're fantastic so thank you thanks so much so you know i was uh, actually contemplating a bit earlier and thinking you know i think when i came out of my mother's womb i was <laughs> kind of <laughs> paranormal because you know as a kid i used to have out-of-body experiences visitations from angels i could see colors i would hear messages all those mm -hmm. things and you know as a kid you actually assume that it's a true of other kids as well right and then I learned later on that, that wasn't the case so I actually love the fact that you are really kind of out there and you're sharing these experiences and you're talking about these things and you're inviting people to tell their stories so let's start there let's start with your podcast because that would be really great I think to let viewers know where they can find you what it's all about and all of those good things well my podcast of course is on apple and spotify and wherever you listen to podcasts so that's that's the good thing it's even on audible um if you're a book reader you can actually listen to it on audible and on alexa all the things but what started my my adventure in podcasting is i used to, i've always listened to internet radio in the way of Hay House Radio before podcasts got really big, right? Or I think even before podcasts were podcasts. And so I used to listen to Louise Hay and Abraham Hicks and all the people that we, you know, and I loved all that stuff because it was interesting to me. And I want, you know, I have an open box about that kind of stuff. And I've always been interested in the paranormal, supernatural, all of that stuff. So when podcasts started getting really popular, I started listening to a ton of different podcasts, one of which was Hillbilly Horror Stories. And I love history too, history, big history buff. And they talked about a lot of historic ghost stories. And I love that. So that's one of the reasons I still kind of watch Kindred Spirits and stuff on TV because they, they go into the history of where it is. I love that. Almost more than the, than the hauntings sometimes. Um, and so... Jerry and Tracy Polly are the hosts, and they asked me to, um, or they were asked listeners to um, give some of their accounts of something paranormal. And I had something that kind of happened to me, nothing crazy. It wasn't really that big a deal, but I just liked them so much, I submitted my little three minute story. Well, they had me on, and Jerry and I, Jerry, Tracy, and I hit it off so well that. They were like, we want you to come and do a fear of the week because play a name play on my last name. My last name is real. It's actually fear. That's my husband's last name. <laughs> and so I started doing fear of the week every Thursday for about 10 to 15 minutes. I'd start, I'd come in and talk about, hey, how long does it take for you to die after your head's chopped off? That kind of stuff. You know, the fun stuff. We, we, nobody really wants to talk about, but I do. <laughs> so, you know, I just talked about, you know, the bugs that are on your face that you don't realize that are always on your face and they're really good for your skin, all the kinds of things. So, but I was still also writing my paranormal romance novels. I was still in the throes of trying to finish my latest one that I released last January 20, uh, of 2022. And, but I was getting kind of burnt out on writing. And when he said, you need to be podcasting. And I was like, what, what? no, I'm not, no. And he, and he wore me down after phone call after phone call, sent me a mic, the same mic that I'm using today. And I said, okay, I'll do it. I'll try it. I don't know what we should do. I just want to know what, how things work. And I love that thing. I love that thought. And I just want to know. And he goes, well, what about just want to know? And I was like, oh, I like that. But there was somebody who already had that. And I said, it's just because I want to know. What is the problem? And then that's what started the because I want to know part. 
So um, I started talking to people who have very unique occupations or life experiences. Very unique occupations to me are maybe a mortician or a man who preps people for prison or people who leave cults or people who um, leave high demand religions. There's a little true crime in that too. But I also talk to people who have had very unique, uh, very unique uh, experiences like near-death experiencers, um, psychic mediums, um, gosh, uh, tarot readers, um, astro astrology, uh, those kinds of things to where they have very unique lives because they talk to all these really cool people and they get all this information to me from the other, you know, in my mind, from the other side. And so I've got a whole new podcast with all these amazing people I talk to that I never would have talked to before. And I've learned so much because I vet these people out. Like I'm on TikTok way too much. I'm not going to lie. And a lot of these people, there's some amazing people on TikTok spreading amazing, amazing messages about we don't have to be afraid to die. I don't want to die anytime soon. We talked about this before we started recording, but I'm not afraid of it either because I know that this is not, we're here physically in this meat suit, but this is not reality. Our reality is up there <laughs> with God, source, whatever you want to call it. We're just here literally learning and going through karma or whatever we're doing so that we can better ourselves and honestly send him more information on, hey, that's how Leslie saw this situation. This is how she took care of everything, or this is how she didn't take care of it, or whatever the case may be, right? This is how Julie saw it. This is how Julie, you know, figured it out. And so it's almost like he's this big computer in the sky. And we're like these little people or these little small USB ports. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I love I love that because the thing is is you only need to have one person in your life or two or three, but you know, it doesn't need to be a huge amount of people that, that, that you feel supported by and you feel seen by, and there's a resonance. And um, you feel like you're part of a community, especially when it comes to the, like the woo woo stuff, you know, because it can be a bit kind of alienated <laughs> if you're the only one. Spirit. I certainly felt like that as a kid, you know, cause I hadn't, I didn't know anybody that would have out of body experiences and meet angels and, Wow. Be loved ones who passed away you know my grandfather came to tell me he was dying when he died and see, um, I need to have my podcast too because you have all these <laughs> I wasn't born with all these gifts I think everybody has them to a certain extent but when you have them coming into it and being confused or whatever but still telling me all you all the experiences you had got it we got to talk yeah. and I was as hard as you made it on me I'll just call you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> yeah, but these, 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 you know, and I think especially now we need to be able to connect with a reality that's bigger than the narratives we hear on online or on the television or, you know, whatever the stories are that can be very depleting. We need to yeah. connect, connect into mystery or source or whatever you want to call that. And especially your intuition too. I'm big on sort of helping and supporting people to connect in with what feels right for them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because when I, I think some of the most interesting people I talk to, well, every single time are the near death experiencers because they all have completely different experiences, but they all come back with one core, two core things. They didn't want to come back. And the other side is more real than here. Yes. That's how it is in lucid dreams as well. And, you know, <laughs> I've, I've said, I've said a few times lately because I've been part of some groups and I, you know, shared and talked about the things that happened to me, but I, but I've said many times in lucid dreams, it's more real than this supposed reality. Number one. Uh -huh. And, and secondly, I had a radical, really, really radical spiritual awakening in 1989, which I've talked about extensively, but the effects of that are very similar to what near death experiences talk about. Wow. You know, that they passed over and come back with with me I went into this it was via a lucid dream and I went into this kind of other reality and then came, came back to the body woke up and then I've spent years trying to assimilate what happened and so there's a there's a lot of um similarities between between near-death experiences and people that have a really authentic radical spiritual awakening absolutely and that's 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 what I mean I need to talk to you because I want to hear all about it yeah <laughs> Part of it, I, I haven't heard the story, so I want to hear it. And my listeners would probably love to hear it. But yeah, um, 
I most of the people and I, I didn't didn't know if I wanted to go here, but this may help people if they're questioning certain things. Um, a lot of people, one specific woman who was a staunch Catholic, she went, you've heard her, Kathy McDaniel, you heard her, I'm sure the the, yes. the she went and she was a devout Catholic. And when she passed away or she left her body for a little while, she had a near death. She wasn't quite well, she was dead, but she wasn't. You got you guys understand that. Um she in her mind went to hell because that's what she was taught. You know, you go to purgatory or hell because you say you're hell Marys, you do whatever you do. There's it's kind of ritualistic in my mind, in my opinion. But when she got when was there and she was experiencing all these things, and she had also just lost a very dear friend. And when this very dear friend showed up after she felt like it was years in some kind of hell, um, he shows up because she starts singing a Christmas song because she just is so distraught and upset. And she goes, it was the only thing that I could think of that would bring me joy. And when I started just raising my vibration and feeling that love of just, just loving the song, I saw my friend who died and he says, now, do you understand that you were just, this is just an illusion. This is just something you were taught and you've been indoctrinated. And I'm not saying every religion does that. I'm not saying anything about necessarily bad about that. I'm just saying there's more to just what that part of this whole ex human experience is. And if you can get past that and just open your mind and go, you know what? God doesn't have anything to do with religion at all. It has nothing to do with religion. No. And, yeah, no, and, I, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, a lot of people are like, well, how can you say that? And I just... He just does it every, every, I don't care what you do in this life. I don't care if you're Dahmer. I don't care if you're mother Teresa, we all go back to source. We're all on, we may be on different levels and we all have to heal and learn and go back and have some things done to us. I think that we do to others, the whole thing. It, it, there's the car going on. I don't know how it all works exactly. I just know that no matter what, this is a play and someone said it beautifully to me the other day when I was interviewing him he said you know how like when you're watching a play and there's a good guy and there's a villain and at the end of the play everybody stands at the stage and they hold hands and they bow and you're all clapping for everybody because it was amazing right but when the bad guy comes out and he's the last guy that comes out you don't boo him you're praising him too because he was fantastic so yeah. we all that balance here we all need the good and the bad obviously to learn but also for other people to, even if you don't think your life is significant, there's a ripple effect of all of this stuff. And it's just so fascinating to me. It's so convoluted though. It's so, ah, it's, there's so much to it that I'll never obviously get the, all the answers, but I certainly can try to help others and spread awareness that we, we are all just one collective. We just are, <laughs> you yeah. know, to learn from each other. So. Yeah, you know, and I love that. You know, I my, my story is similar. I was raised as a Catholic. I can't say I was a staunch Catholic. I yeah. must have, but I was raised as a Catholic, and I was indoctrinated, or there was an attempt, you know, and, and coming from well mean a well meaning place, obviously from the priests and the nuns, right? But I was taught that there's purgatory, there's limbo, which used to scare the heck out of me yeah. much more than else because it was described as being grey and you can't see anything or feel anything, so that. <laughs> <laughs> terrified me but you know um you know I would have to sit and listen to all of that and the whole time from from the earliest years that I never remember I was having these exquisite experiences with angels and with Jesus and with Mother Mary and you know these great beings and all it was was love so I so I you know I would sit there and hear these accounts coming from you know my teachers who seemingly had a uh, relationship with Jesus and the great beings and they knew what was going on and I used to think but that's not my experience you know it wasn't my experience and it never has been yeah and I learned to keep quiet about it but it it yeah. got me off enough that when I went to high school at the age of 14 or 15 or whatever it was that when I moved from middle school I never went back to church I just decided I had to find Jesus in my own way and my path in my own way and then it was later I had a you know a radical spiritual awakening but um 
you know all uh, you know everything everything that's been shared on your show and everything you've just said is is has been my direct experience you know it's all about love it's about learning as well learning from our mistakes learn, learning from one another and and having as much compassion as we can with, with others who are struggling you know yeah, I mean, I, I'm a, I love God. I love Jesus. I, you know, I, I also don't know if we should have, we should ever worship humans. I don't mm -hmm. think we should. The Dalai Lama, you saw what he did with that kid. And I, I don't even know what all happened with that. You know, there was a weird thing that he did with the kid on camera and people were dissing him. And I'm like, listen, I don't know anything about the Dalai Lama, but I still don't think we should have. I don't think Jesus wanted to be worshiped. I think he just wanted to spread awareness about how lovely we all should treat each other and we should, no matter who you are, what color your skin is, what you believe, what hat you wear, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter. And yeah. unfortunately he was um, crucified for it, you know? So that's, and that did happen. And, but I think he was an ascended master. We're all children of God. We're all fragments of God, you know? So he just happened to stand out and people, you know, realize there's i think the thing is i think with the truth and stuff and with religion it's all about control and how they can maybe control the masses and maybe get money or whatever it is and it's been like that for the dawn of time with humans and unfortunately that's the price you pay you know and uh i i have friends who who love their churches and you know what they're wonderful people and they get something out of it and to me if you get something out of it absolutely continue going that's fantastic it's the it's the i i lost an aunt in the um cult the the um heaven's gate cult and that's what made me realize that i'm not saying religion is necessarily cult but there are cults out there that can really manipulate you and really harm you in your family and and not and do nothing but bad things for you and i think that's why i'm very vigilant about guys you can relax i promise you you're going to go to god you i promise you're going to see god and you're going to see source and whatever you want to call him and you have no reason to you're going to see everyone you ever loved you're going to see every pet you've ever had you're going to see every single thing that you loved in life, whether it's art, music, you know, whatever it is, you that will be part of you. And mm -hmm. I just I just want people to know that, <laughs> you know, and, it's just, and you know, I recently forgave my dad for the horrible things he did to all of us kids. And I was like, you know, what somebody said to me, because I was like, you don't know what he did to me, you know, I can't forgive him. And he's you know, he'll win. And one of my friends said, well, he's already winning if he's not if he's not letting you live. So I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that's true. So it was really for me. But then because I'm able to, I can actually talk to my mom on the other side now uh, after practice and practice and doing this podcast, talking to um, psychic mediums and them saying, just talk to her, just talk to her. Don't don't overthink it. Just do it. And what I did, and I was finally after months going, mom, if you're there, what do you do all day? Do you have a job? And you've heard me say this many times on the podcast. And she's, and I heard, I'm a greeter. I've told you that. And from that point on, we've been talking and I'm like, what's it like? And tell me everything. And she said that I asked her, my dad passed away and they had been divorced years before that. And I said, well, do you ever see him? She goes, well, he's not where I am. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> like, what? Where is he? And she said, he's just not on the frequency I'm on. She goes, if I wanted to go see him, I could. We have free will up here too. And so I was like, okay. And she goes, I guess they they don't have a contract anymore or something. I, I kind of get that feeling from her. It's not like we had these conversations. I just get these yes. things from her more than anything. And so when I finally just completely let go and forgave my dad for all the crap he did um, and just freed myself, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm just going to tell him, I'm going to say, I forgive you. And if you're there and I hear I'm here, that's what I heard. And I was like, oh, crap, <laughs> you know? And I said, okay, well, yeah, SOB, <laughs> I'm done with you, you know, and, and all that. And I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not even going to call you that anymore. I'm just going to be nice. Uh, I just say love and light. And he said, I said, well, do you mind if I ask, where are you? 
and he said, I'm, I'm, I'm with source. He goes, but I'm not where you would ever want to be. And I was like, okay, what's that mean? And he said, where I am, it's like solitary confinement. And I have to work on myself before I can do anything to get out of here. And he goes, and the fact that you came to me will only help me get out of here. Oh. And I said, you feel source. And he goes, I feel source all over. I, that's the one thing that keeps everyone going because we can't talk to any. We're all kind of on this level right now. Nobody can talk to anybody. We can hear each other. We can hear cries and stuff from people being upset. And that's must be horrible, but it's not hell not hell it's just a different frequency and he said that the love of source god whatever you want to call it is surrounds him wow. surrounds him always but that i came to him and said i did th and then finally when he said that i said well then okay if that's the case i need you to do something for me go back to that little girl that you should have treated like a little girl go back and hug her go back and tell her how much you love her and, to, and, and show the protection that I didn't get when I was a little girl. And he said, okay, I will do that for you. He goes that only, he goes, I only have that, you know, I don't have anything else to do. I don't, I didn't know where to start. He just passed away like three years ago. So it hadn't been very long. And he said, this will help me get out. This will help me get out. And, and finally, because I was very sick, I was mentally very sick. And I said, okay, well, in my mind, I'm still thinking that's not an excuse, but I, you know, okay, you know, what do you do? <laughs> so, but he, he, that's what he said. And I was just like, wow, okay, that's amazing. That and, really <laughs> but, and I was telling my psychic friends the same thing. And I said, I don't know if I was, cause you think, am I making this crap up in my mind? It's, it's how, and they're like one, both of them, uh, Christina Kern and Crystal Miles are my good friends. They said that's the most beautiful thing they've ever heard, and that that absolutely sounds exactly like what would happen from what they've experienced and the things that they know. Just talking to other people, that kind of—I mean, it's just—I was like, "Wow, okay, <laughs> Wait, maybe I can help him after him." You know, giving people grace who are so in your mind evil to you and your family, um, and I don't have to go into it. People can use their imagination. That's not, that's not the point. The point is, if, if I can go back and do what I did, golly guys, it's freeing for yourself, but you might be able to help someone else in a whole different way than you ever thought. Do you want to help them now? No, you're mad. You're pissed. You don't want to help them. No, I never want to see them again. I never want to go there again. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Trust me. But man, it's either, it's, it's either going to eat you away and you're never going to get that. And you may have to come back and still work on that karma because you didn't, you didn't quite get through it here. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you work through it and you helped them a little further. Because I'm yeah. for letting go, but I'm happy now for him that he's kind of like, what would Jesus do? Well, Jesus would try to do what I did. And I try to go by what he maybe would do too, you know, because I, if, if everybody could live like he lived as opposed to, you know, doing what they were told to do that he would do, <laughs> it would be a whole different world. <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> but, you know, everything, everything that you share via your podcast really helps. I think it really helps support people get clear about what is important to them. You know, the touchstone is a there's a strength that comes from 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 everyone you interview, because there's, there's always something that they're sharing that we can utilize in our own lives in a, in a good way to, to create positive effect. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Thank you. I love talking to, and so many different kinds of people. Like I talk to people about aliens. I talk to people that are researchers. I talk to people that, you know, oh my, there's a man that was in prison and a federal prison on drug charges because he used to sell drugs and he got out and now he preps people for prison. Um, and has a whole new understanding on how horrible it was to be in there and, and grace for the people that have to go, you know, and, you know, or like a mortician and how she handles things and, and what happens when you die, your physical body and all of those things. There's, and there's just so many people that I talk to that regardless if it's something you would want to hear about, there's so many different people that I trust me, there's something for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
and I don't get yeah. paid for it. this for yeah. free. I mean, I've been approached to monetize this and I don't want it to become a full-time job. So my husband and I retired, we're in our fifties and we're not that old, but we were able to do that. And now I can do this for fun. You know, I've always been a stay at home mom. So I never really worked until we got, uh, until I had a baby, but, um, but he retired. So, you know, I don't, we want to go to the weekend place. We want to have the freedom. Although he is working a little part-time job here and there. And he doesn't believe in any of this. Yes. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> he believes in me and he is so proud of me that I love what I do. And I think I've, tr I, mean, I think I changed his mind a little bit on some things, but I love it because it grounds me. You know, it's very easy to get a little caught up in this stuff, yes. but I, I still do the same old things everybody else does. You know, I, I take, I take care of my grand, uh, my granddaughter. I, we go to the pool with the kids, you know, we, yes. we have, we do all the things that we have Christmas, you know, traditions and Thanksgiving traditions. Um, but I guess the reason I really wanted to do this podcast over everything else was because I wasn't hearing specific things that I'm talking about on any other podcast consistently. I mean, there are people who talk about your death, but I guess the variety of what I do is, is just as important to me, you know, as the, as the content. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you're an author too. I mean, you, you've written paranormal romance books, right? I think this, yeah. I think I saw it before or five or six of those you've done. Yeah. I have five, well, I have seven available actually on Amazon, two with a co-author. I've written nine books. There are several um, with other publishers that I can't just put on, on Amazon myself. They're with them. Mm -hmm. So there are five uh, that I've written myself that are available on Amazon. I don't get a lot of money for them. You know, yeah. I just put them on there. I don't care. They're, they're all bestsellers. So that's good. And they're a little paranormal romance novels. And I just started writing. This is before I started the podcast. I've always, I, I was an English minor. I had a voice scholarship in, in college. I used to sing and I have always loved English and I love you know, writing. And I did it in high school and college and tested it out on my friends. And I used to uh, have a blog and I write reviews of books and I was reading all these things. And I've always had a penchant for paranormal especially with some romance in it, you know, got to have the, the dark guy, the handsome guy with the damsel in distress and there's <laughs> romance, you know, and, <laughs> and I started writing about 2012 and with my co-author. And then in 2013, I started my first book by myself, which is Atticus. <laughs> yeah. That's a great cover. <laughs> Isn't it good? Thank yeah. you. Yes. This is my first solo did very well. And then, um, I am one of those things there's, there's something called, uh, you know, a, you know, I'm a pantser. What's it called? What's the other one called? Um, I forget now. <laughs> I can't think of it. Well, what, what a pantser is, is, um, there's people that really, really books like big time. They out, out, outline them. They got every single little thing that's going to happen. And I can't, I don't know what's no. going to happen. Me I neither. Don't. And, yeah. you know, that's my thing. It's even, even on my, the back of my, um, my books, my synopsis books, you know, the synopsis, yeah, the synopsis on the books, I don't give away a whole lot. It's like when I turn on Am or um, when I turn on Netflix, I don't want to see the preview. You're giving it away. Now I don't want to see the movie. Don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I read. Like if I read a book that obviously isn't mine, and I know what's going to happen in the first few chapters, and I, I can probably dictate the entire book, but I don't read it. I'm not interested. So that's one reason why I write in first person present tense, meaning you find out when she finds out. Yes. So somebody dies. I just found that out too. So there you yeah. go. You know? <laughs> and I started writing, at, I started writing my first solo book. Oh, I'm a, that was a first book, but my first series book was Graveyard Watchmen. I started this particular book on Wattpad. You've heard of Wattpad? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The reader writer app where authors just, 
either a lot of people, some people get paid to put their stuff up. I didn't, I just wanted to keep um, practice. So uh, every day I, I challenged myself 500 words every morning, 500 words. I wrote this entire book on Wattpad. They featured it. It's got almost a million views. Wow. And I know I was like, wow. And they, but they featured it too. That helped. And so once I wrote this and everybody wanted the sequel, then I wrote the next two. I wrote, I wrote this next one and then the third book. So there's three books in these. So this is just Graveyard Watchmen. This is Graveyard Watchmen, The Demon Wars. And this is Graveyard Watchmen, Gemini. So wow. that, that's that. And that's about angels and demons. And uh, cause I just love that kind of thing. And then my, my last book is Apollo Sun. I love the cover of this one too. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you. Um, it's about, and, and they're all different. They're all paranormal romances, but they're all a little bit different. I can't write the same thing every time. So this one is based on mythology. It's based on Asclepius, who was a demigod and the son of Apollo. So there's kind of a play on words. So, and it's his romance with someone he meets that's set in Dallas and he's mortal and she is not. Ooh. <laughs> he's immortal. Yeah. She is. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And that's a good one. And it's gotten really good reviews too. So I'm really happy about that. But, and that was the most recent one I released, but I'm a little burnt out on writing and my podcast is now my new love. And I challenge myself all the time on who I can have on. And I'm so glad I met you because I can't have, wait to have you on. I think you'll be a fantastic. Talk. Um, so yeah, that's, that's me in a nutshell. What do you like? <laughs> busy lady very busy lady <laughs> funny as i started tiktok for my podcast and my books right you saw those well i also love to decorate i don't know if you get know this but so and i've been i decorate i've always done it my entire life um uh, being an adult and so we have a 25 year old house and we have a formal living room because every 25 year old house has a formal living room mm -hmm. and i was looking at my old sofa and my old love seat and my taffy table my end tables and I'm like we never come in here we don't use this room unless I force myself to use this room and finally I was like no I'm going to take everything out give the furniture to the kids because it's like brand new it's 20 year old furniture looks brand new and they loved it so I was like when and I put four club chairs and a big round table that you can play cards on or something just a low coffee table I'm telling you my tiktok blew up like you would not believe and now so if it confuses you and you find me on any social media and it first says home decor uh, that's, that's funny. why <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> well I'm trying so Jim and I you know we can't stay with one I am not a one-trick pony let me tell you so uh there you go that's me and <laughs> fantastic well, thank you so much for sharing. I think that might be, you know, I think that, you know, might be, might be the end of our conversation this time around. But um, before <laughs> before we head out, head out, head out, excuse me, yeah. um, maybe share, uh, you know, where people can find you so that they can hear it. I'll put everything in the show notes, of course, but um, just let folks where they know where they can find you. Of course. Okay. So uh, if you just look up my name, literally just Leslie Fear, you're going to find my podcast. You'll find my TikToks. You'll find my Instagram, um, everything. Uh, just look up my name. But my podcast is because I want to know W-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A, no. Um, and you, like you said, you'll put the links up. So if you just type in Leslie Fear, you'll find me. It's very, I'm very easy to find. You'll find all my books, everything. Fantastic. Well, Leslie, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I absolutely loved every minute of this. And for sure, we'll have to have you come back um, because I'd love to hear more about, you know, your podcast and where you go with it and all of those good things. Oh, thank uh, you, avid listener. You've been so supportive and lovely, and I appreciate you very much. And like I said, I'd love to have you on my podcast. I think you'd be, my listeners would love to hear what you've done. I think you're, you're so interesting and you've, you've managed to get through a lot of things. So let's, let's do some talking. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you viewers. Thank you for joining us for this episode. I really appreciate each and every one of you because I know time is valuable. So thank you for spending some time with us today. If you like the content then please share, please let other people know and please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Thank you so much.
over and out for this episode. Take it easy, be well, and much love for now. Bye.